What mentality do you need to learn martial arts? I'm not talking about the mentality that you need for a fight. That's a whole different can of worms. I'm talking about the mentality you need in your training, especially when you first start out. If you can't learn effectively, you're not going to perform effectively either. I know I'm about to sound like one of those, I refuse to quit because my mentality is just too strong, idiots, but mentality is super important. In fact, when you're first learning to fight, mentality can be more important than your actual skills or athleticism. I know this sounds completely absurd and ridiculous, but let me give you some examples so you know what I'm talking about. Back in college, I knew a girl who was a decent sized, very fit woman in her physical prime that took training seriously for over a year. She was one of the largest, strongest, fittest, and most dedicated women in the class, and she was not good. I watched 115 pound Kaylin come in with a fraction of the training time, virtually none of the weight room time, and after a several month layoff, and absolutely wrapped this girl up. On paper, this girl had better mat time, skill, size, athleticism, and virtually every other advantage you can think of, but it was not close. This girl got beat by a lot of people in that room, and it was 100% because of her mentality. She was athletic, but she didn't think of herself as an athlete. She had no trust in her own abilities and no confidence when learning something new. And it's not even that she wasn't tough. I once saw her get locked up in a triangle choke in competition for minutes on end. Once the triangle was taken off, it became obvious that she'd just been holding her breath for the past minute and a half. We like to pin people's failures on their lack of toughness or bad intentions. We like to think it's because they're lazy, unfocused, or just lack that vaguely defined X factor. And all of these can be actual issues, but the number one problem I see, the one thing that dwarfs all other physical and mental challenges combined, is a lack of confidence. If you don't believe you can win, that you can put somebody out or escape a bad position, then you won't. It's like Ed is constantly telling me, if you don't believe a move it'll work, then you're right. You never manage to give your maximum effort because why expend energy if you're destined to lose? Fighting, more than most sports, requires a butt ton of confidence. I coached our MMA club back in college and I noticed a big difference between the people that did sports and the people that didn't. And it wasn't even about their athletic ability or coordination. It was about how willing they were to test new moves and challenge themselves. And the reason that they were more physically ambitious, my personal hypothesis on the matter, is that their background in athletics gave them more confidence in their own physical abilities. If you've been a couch potato your entire life, being thrown onto the ground seems like a scary and dangerous proposition. You've never done it before. But if you played football in high school, being thrown onto the ground seems like a vacation. You mean I'm just being tripped to the ground instead of having a 250 pound missile hit me in the spine? Awesome! The people with athletic backgrounds have been there, done that, and they didn't die. They're also more accustomed to competition and stakes, and as a result, they're less fearful when it's time to start sparring. On the other hand, I have also seen good athletes that are awful because they view fighting as some scary foreign thing. But the moment the lessons click and they learn to trust themselves, all of that athleticism and coordination comes rushing out and it becomes very obvious that their problem was never physical. Now, here's a very important clarification. What I'm saying is that I've noticed an anecdotal correlation between past athleticism and fighting ability. What I'm afraid you might be hearing is that not having a history of competitive sports means you can't ever be good at martial arts. That's not the message here. Remember, this isn't about experience or even current fitness levels. This is about mentality. And the great thing about mentality is it's all in your head. Literally nothing is stopping you from having a better mentality right now. Fitness and skill level inherently take time to improve. In theory, mentality is one of the only major factors that you can improve pretty much instantly. You see, people have a bad habit of putting themselves into boxes. It's infuriating how many times I've heard, well, I can't do that, or but they're an athlete and I'm not. The only difference between you and a world-class athlete is practice, but people seem to hate thinking that way. It's so much easier to convince yourself that you can't do something instead of asking yourself why you haven't started doing it yet. I often ask myself the question why I'm not a better fighter than I currently am, and at the end of the day, I have no one to blame but myself.
We put ourselves in these little boxes of not athletic enough, not a fighter, too old, too slow, or I just don't think that way, just to feel like it's something out of our control. But once you manage to break someone out of their box, the improvements are staggering. Pick me up. Oh, you can put me down, I think about it. Kaylin used to not be able to pick me up at all because she didn't believe that she was strong enough to pick me up. She didn't work out in the meantime. She didn't get stronger. She wasn't lifting weights, doing deadlifts in the gym, none of that. She just gained confidence and it happened. I know this seems like that sounds way too easy to be realistic. And yeah, you're not gonna become a world champion off the power of belief, but you will become better. I'm sure some of you have seen people in striking or MMA classes suck for months until one day things just seem to click and then they suddenly start sparring with way more confidence and poise than they had even a couple weeks earlier. Skills and athleticism can't be built that fast. The only thing that changed is they finally thought to themselves, you know what? I do know how to fight. I've also encountered a lot of people that just don't view themselves as fighters. Like they're somehow allergic to the idea of being violent. I trained with another girl who would not punch me in the face. And I have a very punchable face. She refused to touch her fist lightly to my face because she didn't believe she had it in her. You can hurt someone. You're a human being. Violence is in your bones. We didn't get to the top of the food chain by squeamishly running away from confrontation. That girl could have definitely punched me in the face. She has that aggression inside of her somewhere. She just didn't believe she had it. She didn't view herself as the kind of person that could be a fighter, but she is and so are you. Things become a lot easier to do once you stop convincing yourself that you can't do them. As another example, back when I taught MMA in college, I continually made the warm-ups harder and harder, lesson by lesson, ever so slowly, just to try and get people to build up that athleticism. It was mainly just bridges and Gramby rolls, things that are not hard. I've seen very out of shape people do them. In fact, they were doing all the Gramby rolls and bridges and shrimps that I wanted them to do. Till one day I said, okay class, we're gonna Gramby roll into a bridge, into a shrimp. And the class said, no we're not. No, we're not. They had done all the moves separately. I just wanted them to put the moves together and they decided it was too hard for them. I've seen them do the moves. I know they can do the moves. They didn't believe they could do the moves. It looked too complicated. It looked scary and weird, so they didn't try. These were all 20 year olds. There was no one in that room that was physically incapable of doing those moves. Now, for most beginners, confidence is something they eventually get the hang of once they get used to sparring and feel like they have enough skills. But the people that come in with a higher level of confidence end up doing better, and that advantage can stick around. After all, doing well in your first few weeks is only going to reinforce your confidence and convince yourself and others that you must have a special talent. That's going to encourage you to keep training and encourage others to give you greater challenges. Self-doubt can quickly become a self-fulfilling prophecy, but a high level of confidence can be too. When you first start a martial art, understanding that you can do these moves and that you have the potential to be a great martial artist can set you on a better path to success. Convincing yourself that you're a loser can put you into a vicious cycle. While a lack of confidence is a common problem for beginners, it's worth noting that even experienced martial artists can fall into the same trap. Lifelong martial artists in their mid-30s have complained about being too old to learn things. Ed. And every time someone says they can't learn something, all they do is add fuel to their self-fulfilling prophecy. There is absolutely no reason that a 50-year-old woman can't become a great wrestler. I get that I probably sound like one of those think your way to success with the power of belief charlatans out there, but confidence is genuinely important in fighting. It's not everything. Believing that you can beat up a grizzly bear is just going to get you confidently dead. But believing that you can do that move, that you can be athletic, that you can be a great fighter is basically a prerequisite to being one. When I first started MMA, I was especially interested in the grappling side of things. And I remember thinking to myself, some of these guys have been wrestling since they were born. I better learn to fight off my back because trying to out-wrestle them is hopeless. Only in the past couple years did I realize how stupid that thought is. So about six months ago, I started seriously working on my wrestling. Now I have people all the time tell me that it's so good I managed to work my wrestling background into my grappling game. A wrestling background, which remember, I don't have. 
I now take great pride in the fact that I've bamboozled experienced martial artists into believing that I know how to wrestle. I spent years of my martial arts career believing that I couldn't do something, that I would never be as good as the people that started earlier, so it was pointless to try. And every day I think about how much better I would be if I hadn't done that, if I had had more confidence in myself. And that's the kind of regret that I don't want you to have. And it could have been even worse. What if I had gotten so discouraged that I quit altogether? Then, who would be on YouTube being unreasonably angry about pointless martial arts stuff? Who? You and I are not defined by our disadvantages. Your mentality can put more limits on your progress than age, size, gender, or time can ever hope to. And the main thing stopping you from being a great fighter is you. Look at this kid, he's an idiot. I bet that he can't even fight. Cause my Krav Maga skills could totally kill. Only my school does martial arts right. Alright, Kaylin, pick me up. So she used to not- <laughs>